We have a quorum. Yeah, you can, I'm sorry. We have a quorum, and uh, I need the Madam Clerk to call the roll, please. Harry Adams. Here in present. Brittany Branham. Here. Shag Branham. Here. David Gearhart. Here. Rick Hughes. Here. B.D. Nunnery. Here. Josh Turner. Here. Don Ritz. Here. David Gearhart sends his uh, apologies that he couldn't be here tonight. He texted me early yesterday, as a matter of fact. All right, let's start off by invocation. Shag. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to be here to represent this wonderful community. Give us the strength, the wisdom, and the boldness to move forward with the projects we see as fitting for this community. Give us the honorable, the honorable allowance to do as you wish. In Jesus Christ's name, this I pray. Amen. 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 Everyone, please stand for the covers. We will set the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, visitors, <coughs> Wes Hart, you're up Wes first. Thanks, sir. Wes Hart's with Kentucky Lottery. He's here in place, in place of Lance Powell, who's going to be here tonight. Thank you for that. <laughs> let, 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 let me give you guys a quick no, rundown. Anybody who plays a Lance is good. Let me give you guys a, a quick rundown of what it's here for. They have a, um, it's a remote lottery machine. It's Would you want me to have some information on that? Yes. And uh, they have a desire to put it in the uh, golf course. Is this the package that cut the numbers in? It does. Yours does. Yes. Thank you. So I'm, sure, I'm sure there's never any gambling goes on. I have these little brochures as well. No, no. I'm sure there's never any gambling goes on in a golf course. Ha! But no. the no. lottery would like to put a machine in there. So basically, what it is, it's a. It, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Keno. Keno is like a, a bar type game. It's the big TV screen they draw every four minutes. This is a machine we're just now launching. Uh, it's been manufactured. These are the first in the United States to be launched. And it's basically the customers go up and put their money in it play the Kino ticket just like they bought it at the bar, but it eliminates the labor at your bar. So the customers can go play it. Now the bar would be, your golf course would be responsible if the money earned is just like you're selling it. But the, the money goes into this machine, prints the tickets. We have the TVs up, they can sit there and, and socialize and watch the, the TV. Uh, so you got no labor and it increases. Now at the golf course, I'm not sure because you got people there all year round anyway. But in the restaurant bar business, it raises uh, food and drink sales by 17%. That's a national average, Keno does. So it's something to think about if you if you wanted to increase during your slower times in the winter. I don't think you guys ever have a slow time, but there's, there's usually a crowd out there. But it's something to think about. It could increase your, your profitable items by keep, giving people another excuse to come out on a rainy day or a snowy day and, and hang out and socialize, watch a ball game, and play some Keno. What's our commission? For it's small. Well, it's uh, you're only making five percent on sales and one percent on on the the payouts. All the money goes to the keys. I don't know how many of you guys have kids in school, but the keys scholarship program is funded from us. So all the every time you sell a ticket, you're helping helping our local kids go. It's that same play that old buddy the barber used to use for the children. For the kids. For the kids. <laughs> if, 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 if this was actually true, yeah, we operate on the lottery operates on six percent of what we take in, and so we, we operate on really thin margins. That's all we know is ever get a raise. We we hire Lance cheap, and, <laughs> but uh, but if there were to be a problem, if, it, we, if we want to not do it anymore, if you want to see some sisters, no, you fill out a reach out application. It's a two hundred fifty dollar licensing fee uh, through August thirty first. If you fill this out. Two weeks after you begin sales, we're going to refund two hundred dollars. So basically, you'll have fifty dollars. Uh, you just say two months from now, you say, "Hey, this isn't worth. It. We don't want it. We pull it out. No questions asked. You're not under a contract. It's not a contract, a time limit contract. It's just you're licensed to sell this product. Uh, there's no term on it. If you decide you don't want to do it, you're, you just fill up. Tell Lance to come get it. Yes, Shay. What's a typical unit bring? A uh, Keno, like uh, where I came from, and uh, up along the Ohio River there in Maysville, uh, a lot of the bars they were selling anywhere from three to five thousand dollars a week. Uh, Lance did sign up the Kent Station uh, Golf Course. There's about uh, two more golf courses there locally signed. Uh, Darren Feldhouse, remember Darren? Yeah, they 
they're about to break his leg, Lance's legs, because he won't deliver the. We thought we were like, we're having to start installing until we've got two weeks and we'll start installing it. So they're just chomping at the bits. They gamble a little bit like they did down here. So if you want, I can leave my card. And you've also got Lance's number. And so you guys can have. I'm the, I'm the, regional, I'm the regional sales manager. We so can get approval here if the board wants it up there. I think we sorry. Are you staying before the, before the advisory board up there and see what their thoughts are until we know these councils want approved? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. If we get the approval this I evening and then I get their motion and a vote. I'll make a motion to see if they like it. I have a motion to put no. Keno. I'll second. I have a second. Discussion. All in favor? Uh, no, no, no. All opposed? It's going to go before the advisory board on the golf course <coughs> until uh, basically they do the determination. They're the ones that are uh, giving all the advice on how to operate and stuff. If they like it, I'll give Lance a call. I right, appreciate it. And did, Lance, did they drop an application by for you guys? He Pretty sure he did. And here's an extra hard copy okay. of it. So. If they have any questions on that as well. All right. So I'm assuming in that motion is <coughs> also to allow me to go ahead and get the advisory board approved me to go ahead and start signing the paperwork, correct? Yes. I thought I heard you say that, yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank yes. you, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Appreciate your time. What you page off. was that number on? Yeah. <laughs> the bad page. page. Maybe another file or something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody else? That's me. Visitors want to speak? Yes, sir. Do I stand up, and, it's up or, to you. or kneel before you? It's up to you. I wouldn't kneel. No, no, no kneeling. I'm Joe Santi of Seven. I'm a three-year resident of lovely town of Prestonsburg. I live on the humble side of uh, North Arnold Avenue. And I have three questions, I think. One is, what are we doing in this town about all the empty houses? that I notice, especially on Arnold, which is, you know, my neighborhood. Uh, do we have, do we address those in some fashion with uh, letters to the owner, increased taxation, burning at the stake? <laughs> I appreciate your question on that. Let me explain. I wish we could put more taxes on vacant houses. We can't leave them. That'd be improper taxation. Only thing we do is try to help people find houses when we do. Uh, I'm, I'm fortunate right here where I'm at. I talk to people all the time. I put them in touch with people who have empty houses. Um, and, you know, we try our best to get them filled. We cannot force anybody to lower rent or to make accommodations for anybody to put them in housing. Unless one of the people that's been brought to town to find a medical man, he's place to live. Okay, yeah. So we are working on it. We are working on it. We're trying to get rid of people in here so they will need houses. That's one good thing. But um, there's nothing that we could do to force somebody to adjust rent, to make anything happen so they can do it. And we just because unless the house is in disrepair, unless the grass is over six inches long, there's nothing we can do except for, and even at that point, all we can do is find yeah. I wish we could. Personally, yeah. personally, I have a house across the street from me. We can't even find the owners at this point. It's it's one of those where it was an heir who was underage, can't even locate the true owner of the home now. <coughs> that certainly is a great way to guarantee that home values will decrease, neighborhoods will go to heck in a handbasket. What can what can you do? Is there a plan to address not only homes on Arnold and other places, but also the down, downtown establishments. Uh, it looks pretty rough down there sometimes. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean it looks pretty rough? Oh, I mean the empty empty home uh, buildings. Which ones? The buildings are exploding in the middle of downtown. Which, which ones are you talking about downtown? Oh, I don't know the numbers of them, but there's a number of empty I think if you go down and look right now, there's only two on Court Street. I'm going to use that as Court Street. Yeah. There's only two empty buildings that either is not in the process of being remodeled to be uh, occupied or is in the process of being rebuilt to be occupied. We've been very fortunate. A lot of people, you know, 
they concentrate on the negatives and don't look at the positives. I'm not saying you do, but a lot of people do. And what they do is they will say, yeah, we got to They don't look at the new businesses we do have to spread out all over town. And we're starting to grow some. Just for instance, since the Bible Management Center has been put in up in that area up there, we've had two new businesses open in that area. And I'm sure it wouldn't have had until we got Bible Medical Center in there. So we're actually starting to grow a little bit, and we're starting to grow out from there. So uh, things are starting to happen. Unfortunately, it's a time thing, too. We're in a real poor economy right now with the COVID taking the lead of us. So we're looking at other, other economies that uh, we can uh, step into, tourism being one of them. But it is improving. And I understand exactly. I, I was frustrated three years ago. I noticed that we eventually started getting more and more out. So we're getting there. Mr. Santista, I hope I say this correct. Mr. Santista Bun, right? Oh, sorry. Close? Close? Was it close? <laughs> was it close? I can't say. So <laughs> there, there is a, there's an avenue that you can go through. Three, you need three signatures on a letter to our codes enforcement. Because I've done this under the previous administration. It didn't work. Well, we have an administration that make it work. Three uh, persons around a building that is not inhabited, and that those three residents consider it a danger, then our codes will come to look at it. And if they consider it a danger, that it's uninhabitable, then they will start a process to demo. Now, under that process, I will say we demo two houses in town, or we've been a part of them being demo. And what the whole deal is, we got to have people complain about it. Unless I'm mistaken, the houses on Arnold Avenue that you're talking about, I'm pretty sure that they're in good order. They're not in disrepair, are they? Are the houses in good order? Or are they? I don't believe so. Okay. That, that's where you need to call in our codes officer. He goes out and starts violating. Once we the, have a series of violations. There's one that uh, David Lane's fixing up that, you know, I'm sure one of the ones he's thinking about is the one of the ones beside the church, beside the Church of Christ. Oh, I should have come the old fair child house. Sorry, but that's being there. He's he's renovating it. It's not. Oh no, there's one that's being renovated. Mm -hmm. That they're doing a, a decent job. But there's another. It's a little A-frame. Looks like a chalet. Belongs in the mountains. The one that's McGuire's. And then. Another one that's... Oh, no, that's... that's, that's, that's one of the Ash, street there. Yeah. Well, who, who was it? Ackerman's old Ackerman, 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 yeah. I know that we violate them more than once. They go out and take care of the issues and they fix it back. So there's not a lot we can do. After a series of violations, it becomes a safety hazard, then we can act on it. But, unfortunately, like all government, it's a process. We have put a new one. We voted in March, I believe. New code. Where, new code where... A lot of this is going to fall back on the bank that has it. When they, banks were allowing these to just go and disrepair yeah. themselves, that can't happen anymore. The bank will be held liable. So I know it's not a, it's not a quick answer, but it is an answer. Well, I don't expect that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you did with go. Yeah. Thanks. You had three questions. That's two. Well, I have another one. This town has as its major iconic symbol. That bridge. Yes. Who the heck was in charge of? Never mind. But He's what can, can we find money somewhere? Can we write grants to clean it up, power wash it, make it a park, uh, do something with it? I mean, it's a shame. That's a that's a we're very right right cool now. structure. Where we are right now, supposedly there's not supposed to be even foot traffic. So we can't go on and work on it right now due to the, due to the shape. Because it's going to collapse? <clears throat> yes. There's big old pieces of concrete falling out of it. it ain't Oops. Time. Well, that's not good. And that's an issue. That's why it's fenced on each end. Yeah. You're not supposed to be on it. I, I think maybe somebody forced the door open or something. We have, uh, we've looked into fixing that. And I think the most reasonable cost we've found so far in Cliff, please correct me if I'm wrong, is about six and a half million. I don't think it'd be that much, but it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a tremendous amount of money. We looked. We even had an engineer come in from Texas who came in on his own dime just to look at it because that is the only bridge still standing with that particular type of engineering <coughs> in, involved in it. It's the only one in the United States. But that's what he yeah. said. Well, I don't care what he said. He's right. I mean, they're, they're the other, that style, not exactly like it, but 
But that's that's my point. Exactly like that, where the, where the arch goes around to the base of both piers on each side of the road. Why don't so, we demo build a new bridge so those people get in and out of West Prestonsburg easier? Right. We're, we're working. There, there a solution to the bridge is being worked on. And the three options you've got is to completely rehab it, make it restore it exactly as it was, and that's going to be a whole lot. The other option would be to tear it down completely and put something else there. And then the other option would be to possibly just tear it down or safe it up to where everybody can admire it for what it is. Yeah, well, or and then find a way around it. But it, it, it is being discussed. But it, it comes down to money. And, the, you know, the, the city owns the bridge, even if right now, if, if the bill, the bill got plenty of money, Bill gave us $4 million on the city, the city going to have to maintain it from there, and there's another cost. There's a lot more, you know. Sure. Well, it's, it's always about money, but in my notion, and I'm ignorant and innocent, is that it's also wherewithal. You know, a hood spot. I mean, if you think it's worth saving, making, making it nice, making it attractive, and make it more of an iconic symbol, then let's go out and find the money. Go ahead. I, I, I can assure we, you, we, we're we, we have just about exhausted our sources. I mean, we went. Cliffs beat doors down. I beat doors down because I would like. I, I would like anything. It's, nothing more than to be able to save that. So we can't connect to the east. Can to the right, to the rail trail? We're going to try that route. It's more critically important now to have that crossing. I mean, West Pressburg should have never been cut off, in my opinion, because that was 1979, give or take, so I mean, 30, 40, 21, 40 years ago. Yeah. And, uh, and so we're, I don't know, the city should have done more over the last 40 years instead of just dropping it now and then. So it's a bigger challenge, but we are, Again, Les is doing everything he can, and I'm doing everything I can. But it's critical not only for the bridge crossing, but to connect that, that rail to trail crossing. Ten or twelve years ago, half a million dollars were fixed. Just because it never was secured, it just kept decaying. decaying. But, but what we need more than anything right now is for the public to finally quit just admiring it for the you know, old. You know, the safety hazard is deteriorating. To me, it's an eyesore that much more is already in the symbol for the public to come to together, make the phone call, call your call your senator, call your representative, and say you want something done. And that, that to me, is going to be a critical element of this whole process because of the funds, all city cabinets, federal government, state government, that's where you see we're just, you know, hard to justify. Anybody else? Gina? <coughs> I'm not sure I want to speak up at this point. I'm just here on dogs and hot car order. Three months into this, I'm dedicated. Like we have, uh, we, we've looked into it hard. Yeah. And uh, we've talked with the prosecuting attorney. He's willing to back us on anything we do as long as we have a, a situation with dogs in danger. And we're actually going to be putting a directive out in one form or the other to the police and fire. And let them mostly be the ones to deal with this because they're the, one of the first ones on the scene within the next week. Okay. We're just trying to figure out which venue to use to get it out. Because I think it needs to be like announced to be like, hey, City of Prestonsburg, this is official. You will be the first one to hear about it, and you can come over and film. Because I, I mean, I can't keep driving to Walmart and like scaring <laughs> old ladies with a hammer. Like I, I can't keep doing that. <laughs> Riding, you know. well, the first thing we need people to do is start contacting them. We're going to have to have police or fire on the scene. Yeah. I mean, we can't have citizens on that. So well, if you know, I mean, if it, uh, the unfortunate case, if you see it, I don't care where you're at in the city of Pressburg, we'll be there in less than five minutes. Yeah. Worst case scenario. Yeah. But don't do self help if you can't have yeah. from it. Try to call the police. I That's what I tell people. Call them like, and take a picture mm -hmm. and call 911. Yeah. That's what I do. Bill? I don't have anything to say this week. Yet, yet. Not yet, yet. I'm going to leave that door open for you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, that's public comments, ministers, unfinished business. <coughs> Had enough. Oh, wait a minute. Can you give us an update on the trail? The rail trail project. As a matter of fact, we met with the uh, engineering group. They're in the process of working on the bid package now to do the grubbing and the. Uh, the uh, cleaning up basically of it, and we'll be following that up with a uh, 
second bid, which will be for the construction, which will be taking the ballast, forming it like it has to be, work on drainage and all that. The third one will probably be the bridges. They're going to be a separate one. And the fourth one will be uh, paving and the aggregate. When will these first bids come out? Well, we're waiting on the engineering firm right Seven. now. Seven. Yeah. As soon as in, yeah, the all rail oh, Within a month, easy. Yeah, within a month? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'll be the first, and, and the all rail is up, and, and uh, they'll start on some of the crossings uh, pretty soon. The, next person the reason we broke it down, rather than have one company come in, let's say, and I'm going to use, let's say, they got a paving company, wins a bid on everything, he has to sub everything out, and he has to cut his slice out of it. If we have individual bids out, it should save us money. So, we haven't projected the finish date yet. I wonder that. <laughs> I, I really don't know what to tell you because we don't know what the drainage is going to tell us to get up there. We don't think it's going to be that substantial. And it's going to be scheduled and everything else. So we don't think it's going to take long, uh, especially with the way that well, after they pulled the rail and stuff, they did a lot of the compacting and stuff for us, so it should make it pretty easy. I hope the guy that's living on Parkway doesn't bid on it. No, it won't be. <laughs> really? I agree there. there. No, they didn't. Uh, with the Floyd County doing the trying to uh, connect with the ATV trails. Are we going to try to do something in that fashion with you? Not on that trail, camp. We 100% uh, we, we said there would be no ATVs on the camp. We oh, I, I know on this. Oh, are we? Are we going to but try to? In general, we would like to. The, the the downside of that is we have core of engineer property which can't have one on one side. We have US 23 on the other. So we're sort of boxed in. We'll support it any way we can, and if you know whatever we got to do. We need to go out and start annexing some trip out there and put them on. I'm for it. But that's where the uh, problem is, is. We just don't have the property for it right now. We support it, and I have support it. I've been to the meetings and everything else, but we've got to have the property to be able to do it. Thank you. All right. New business. Approval of 7.15 and 7.30 of 19 minutes. I'll make that motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, All opposed? Approval of bills? I looked through them today. I didn't see anything different, so I'll make a motion. I have a motion and a second. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Authorize the mayor to sign loan documents for PCUC. They are trying to get a half million dollar uh, uh, what's the word? Line of credit. Line of credit. Half million dollar line of credit. They don't need it. They just want to have it for, that's just it. They don't need it. They just want to have it in place for emergency. Just in, just in case. Just in, in case. case they come up short on something or have a crisis emergency that if they have to do real quick, they'll have it. That's our Line of credit through us? No, no. Through the bank. Oh, I'll make a motion on it. Is, is it out? Or was that what Yeah, they, they took care of that. Exactly. Exactly. I couldn't call the weapon. Is that an addition to the line of credit we already have? Or is that the department that we're going to talk to someone else? No, they don't have a line of current line of credit. That's what I couldn't tell. No, they do not have a current line of credit. They have loans, but they don't have a current line of credit. It's just a $500, $500,000 sitting there. It doesn't cost anything besides what you use. Right. Well, they won't use it unless it's an absolute emergency. It's a safety fund. Safety yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll second here. I have a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any other new business anybody wants to bring before the council? Yes, I do. Yeah. Here I don't know what the cure is. I don't know what the problem is. You make a motion to go into executive session? Yes, if you want me to. Yes, I will. We need to go into executive session for um, 61.810, subsection 1, subsection B. Having to do with a business that will be affected if it went public before the was able to uh, at least enter into negotiations. It, it could be very detrimental. If that would be my motion. Oh, exactly what you're talking Yep. I have a motion and a second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed. Josh, excuse us just a few minutes. I don't think this will take long. I need a motion to come out of executive session. I'll make that. I have a motion and a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Anything coming out of the executive session? Yeah, I have a motion. I have a motion to authorize the mayor to begin negotiation with all entities involved 
in their business proposal. I uh, also want to add authorization for uh, to enter into negotiations with the state agencies that will be intervening in this negotiation process. And when the transaction is uh, reached a tentative agreement for the mayor to bring before the council uh, something to look at. I have a motion to second. second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. One other thing is we may be scheduled a public hearing here soon so people watch the watch the news, watch the uh, Facebook, social media, and be prepared for it. It will probably be about two weeks away we'll have a public hearing. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I have a second. Any discussion open? All in favor? Aye. All opposed. You know,